Good morning and welcome to our second service of worship this morning at Central Christian Church. We're so glad you're here. That was uh, my son Ezekiel opening for us on the harp. And so we so appreciate Ezekiel and um, all his contributions to our worship. And we appreciate you. It's good to see you out there. I see some people chiming in and it's so good that we can uh, support each other even across the miles and worship together that we have the technology that allows us to do that and know that we pray for you and also i'd like to remind you get your communion elements ready because this is a communion service and we have the privilege in our tradition of uh, providing our own elements for communion so we'll have that communion service uh, at the end of our worship from home service today in about uh, 40 minutes but uh, so great to see you all and um, great to worship with you all. And Nikki's going to start off with a word of prayer. Most loving and gracious God, we thank you for this beautiful morning and this opportunity to gather with one another to sing your praises and to hear your word anew. God, we lift unto you those things that weigh so heavy on our hearts and minds. We hand over to you our resentments and our worries, our frustrations and our concerns. Oh God, we give them to you and ask that you transform them and turn them into a blessing, oh God. God, open our minds, open our hearts, open our lives up to you, oh God, that we may feel your spirit blowing through our lives this day anew, that we may feel your love surrounding us, that we may be touched by your grace. God, be known to us in this act of worship. And may all we say, do, sing, and think be pleasing unto you, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. We thank you and we love you. Amen. Amen. And uh, we're going to start off by singing. My family um, doesn't like the songs that we normally sing, so uh, but they do like Amazing Grace. So we're going to sing that. That's one that everybody knows. So let's sing that one all. Amazing grace, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. It was grace. I think it's the, is this Eden mm -hmm. comes up and any children come up and uh, I help out with the children's time this morning. Yeah, so Eden, come on up. I'd love to have you join me. And any kids out there, please gather around. This is a time for you and we'd love to have you join us. So Eden, I have something. I'm going to have to have you hold this microphone for me today because I brought something to show you. I'm going to move communion over a little bit. Ezekiel, can you bring me that bowl and glass. All right, so today I brought something. We're gonna have a little experiment, okay? And so 
here's what I need you to do. I need you to hold this up right near my mouth, okay? Mm -hmm. And I want you to picture this glass is kind of being like you, okay? Or like me. This is our mind, okay? This glass is our mind, okay? And as we go about life, we start getting distracted, right? We may wake up in the morning and we think, today's going to be the day. We're going to be all focused on God today, right? But then we wake up and we get, maybe someone hurts our feelings, or we read the news and we get really distracted, or maybe we open up the newspaper, or maybe someone forgot to call us that we wanted to call us. And before we know it, our mind becomes kind of clouded by the things of this world, right? By our worries and our concerns, by our anxieties and our anger, we get consumed by it and our mind becomes cloudy, right? Now, if we stare at this long enough, let's stare at it and see if we can transform it. Ready? Now, that didn't do anything, did it? It still looks cloudy. Just us thinking about something didn't necessarily change it. But I want to show you something. I want you to think about this as being the Word of God. Okay? I want you to think about this as being God's love. And when we turn to God, when we look to the things of this world, we can get, our life can get pretty cloudy, right? Our, our mind can get pretty muddled. But when we turn to God, when we start focusing on God's word and on God's love and on what the scripture says about how God can transform our mind and transform our hearts and how God can take even our hardest days and turn it into happy days. What's happening here? Can you guys see what's starting to happen? It's not near as foggy, is it? It's not near as foggy. And so if we keep pouring in God's love, we keep pouring in God's word, and we say, not today, world. Today I'm focused on God. Then look what happens. Our minds, our hearts, they're no longer clouded. They're no longer consumed with anger or with worry or with fear. They're consumed instead with God's love, with God's word. Mm -hmm. And so we need to remember our scripture for today tells us not to be focused on the world, not to be focused on those things that distract us from God, but instead to be focused on God's word and God's love. Because when we fill our minds, when we fill our hearts with God's word and with God's love and we, and we know of God's grace, then we don't have to worry about the things that muddle up the world, right? We don't have to worry about those resentments and confusion and fears. Instead, we can be focused on our love and through God in Jesus Christ. So do you think you can remember that? The next time you start getting worried or concerned or angry, you can remember to fill your heart up with God's word, maybe to open up the Bible or to say a prayer or to sing amazing grace and to be reminded that God is with you and that God loves you very, very much. And God loves you guys very, very much. So let's have a prayer. God, we thank you for this day and for these children gathered here. And God, we thank you for believing in us, O oh Lord, even when we get distracted and confused or go astray. God, continue to pour your love into our lives and help us always to see it with our eyes and with our hearts and with our spirits. For it's in your loving name we pray this day and every day. Amen. Thank you, Eden. And thank you, guys. Thank you, Ezekiel, for getting rid of that. Very good. Well, again, it's good to see people joining us um, on the screen, and um, good that we're able to uh, be connected across the miles. And uh, just know that we pray for you, and we lift up some uh, prayer concerns that are on our hearts today, and uh, we uh, share our prayers uh, together in this virtual room. And uh, we do have a lot that we um, are... Uh, holding in our hearts and as I mentioned there's I, it's I don't want to name names because there's so many that we pray for I don't want to exclude anybody but 
please do know that we pray for all of these concerns and uh, right now what's most important um, we think of all those that are the kids that are going back to school the the teachers and the families that are, are going back to school and all the decisions that are being made around these questions um, and uh, we know that these are um, uh, different um, times than any we've experienced before so our hearts do go out to all those that are are feeling stress around uh, these questions about going back to school and uh, we do pray for all of the hardship and um, the illness and the economic uh, hardship that people are uh, suffering in these times and uh, we do have uh, several members of our church family that we keep in our prayers at this time and uh, some different things going on uh, illness and uh, procedures and um, babies and all these kinds of things in the life of a church family. So just know that we, we keep all of these in our prayers. Well, now let's turn our hearts to God. And uh, Nikki, did you have well, I just to wanted to also offer up, I wanted to offer up prayers for the firefighters and the first responders in both Colorado and California right now fighting these wildfires and for the people that are in, you know, needing to evacuate and um, just for all the uncertainty that comes with this time. And that's true and we've got it's heavy in the air even here um, the sun was red the air quality is is poor here in Denver and but we know there's places where that's even even more difficult so we do lift these in our prayers and uh, well let's go to God in prayer let's turn our hearts to God and lift up all these concerns and, and do know uh, that we pray for you and let's pray and uh, God we're trusting in you and we're calling on your name and we Know that, God, we cannot rely on our own strength, but we have to turn to you and to your strength. So, God, help us to come to the end of our strength so that we can see where is our true source of strength. God, help us to realize that it's not in, in we ourselves, but that we have to turn to you so that we don't carry a weight that is not ours to bear. God, help us to remember that it's, it's none of our business what tomorrow brings, what other people think of us. God, help us not to carry these kinds of weights. Help us not to worry about these kinds of things. But God, help us to focus on you and on your promises and on your guidance and direction in our life. God, because we have only to serve one. Help us not to be people pleasers, but God, help us to be God pleasers. For this is what you've created us to do. God, help us to set our sights on our, our true hope that is our hope in you and in your promises and not on the things of this world. God, help us not to get sidetracked by the things off to the right or to the left. Help us not to, to put our hope in, in empty promises, but to trust in you and the firm foundation that we have in you and in your son, Jesus Christ. God, help us to find our power from the true source of strength, from you and your son and by your Holy Spirit. God, all these things we pray and we pray for those that are suffering and hurting these natural disasters here and around the world and God just help us perhaps these things can help to open our eyes to, to trust in you to put our our hope in you and not in the things in this world God we pray all these things in Jesus name and we ask your blessing upon each one and we pray even as he taught us saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And uh, the lesson that we have today, I thought, was a really powerful lesson. Ezekiel read it in our early service. And it's a lesson that's um, familiar. In fact, this whole chapter of Romans in chapter 12 is very familiar. But we're going to read only these first two verses today. And so if you're with us in the, the early service, you heard um, an exposition of this uh, lesson already. And Nikki was sharing about it in her children's sermon. But let's see what we can make of it here in this time and place today. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. So hear now the word of the Lord, where the scripture says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, 
by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. This is the word of the Lord, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Paul's letter to the Romans. Thanks be to God. Amen. And I just thought, you know, Nikki shared um, her take on this scripture and the children's time. And, but for me, it's, it's this verse one that says, which is your spiritual worship. Your body is a temple. And what this is saying to us is it says that we are to worship God not by um, going someplace, you know, not, there's not some particular place in the world that we are to worship God. We are to worship God in our hearts. Our body is the temple. The temple is not sitting on some hill. The temple is not on some street corner at the, the corner of X, Y, and Z. The temple is right here. And uh, Paul also says in 1 Corinthians six nineteen, he says, your body is the temple of God. And so I think this is a really powerful lesson for us, for people who um, are not able to go to church because this is saying, what is our responsibility to worship? It's not to go any place. We're already here. We're already in the place where we need to go, which is our bodies. Our body is the temple. And so this is suggesting that worship isn't something that you can just clock in and clock out. Our bodies, we're always in our bodies, and that means that we're supposed to be worshiping all the time. That's the good news. That's what I hear out of this scripture. Well, and I think to piggyback on that, that if our body is the living temple, if our body is the temple, then the ver next verse follows about, then we got to make sure that our mind is right that our mind is focused on God, not on the things of this world, but on God. And I see that as being, you know, when, if we talk about the temple, if we think about the temple, you know, there's even the story of when Jesus was a little boy and his parents couldn't find him and he was there still in the temple, you know, and if we think about the temple, our body being a temple, then it only makes sense that part of keeping the temple clean, part of the keep, keeping, keeping the temple focused on God is keeping our minds focused on God, keeping our hearts focused on God, because our minds can take us all kinds of places with our thoughts. It's kind of what I was talking about in the children's sermon of, you know, the milk is the cloudiness of the world. You know, if we start listening to the messages of the world, you know, or if we, if we listen to our regrets or our anger, or if we listen to our you know, um, concerns or our worries, then everything feels cloudy and mucky and, you know, dark and worthless, you know, but when we start and we replace that with God's word, you know, with gr God's grace, with God's love, then we see that light in the darkness. Then we realize that maybe what our brain is telling us is not the truth, but what's the truth is God's word. And that's, you know, we have this book, and I think, I think it's why it starts, st starts out on that chapter with your body is the temple, and to have your temple in the right place, you got to have your mind in the right place. And your mind can't be focused on the things of this world. Your, fo your mind needs to be focused on God and God's blessings and God's love. Well, and it says, you know, so you may discern what is the will of God. And I love that statement. What if reality is God's will? What if reality is God's will? So, you know, how are we separated from reality? Well, by the delusion of our minds. We choose delusion. We choose to live in a fantasy rather than the reality. What if reality is God's will? And so this says that if we trust that God is doing all of these things, these circumstances are part of a larger plan and purpose. Can we trust it? Or do we get afraid and try to rebel against what God is doing? Do we get angry? Do we dig our heels in against the very reality? You know, that's what I hear this saying. You know, how do we align ourselves with God's will because God is for us and not against us? So why are we fighting against the reality? Well, because we're human, <laughs> that's why. And because we have fears and we have concerns and we have hurts and we have resentments and, 
you know, and I think we have the news media 24 seven, you know, telling us different opinions. I was thinking this morning how strange and unique and bizarre and wonderful it is that today falls Sunday, the day we come to focus our hearts and minds on God, Sunday falls between here in the United States, the Democratic National Convention and the Republican National Convention. And I thought, I was thinking this morning of, oh, well, isn't this right that this scripture talks about don't be concerned about the things of this world, be focused on God. And right here, smack dab in the middle of the, the, this presidential conventions, we have Sunday to come back and be reminded that what, who's in charge of this world is God. You know, who our, who our major allegiance should be to is God, you know, and that, you know, to me, that was just an interesting thing of, you know, if we're going to, I had it heard it once said, and I think I've even said it here during worship at home, that for every hour you spend watching the news, you should spend two hours reading your Bible, you know, to remind yourself that it's not about the worries and fears of this world. It's not about the divisions and the things that keep us separated. It's about the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. It's about being in community with one another, not because it's easier because we want to or because we like to, but because we've been called by God to be not of this world, but to be of God's world. And God's world is a world of love and a world of grace and a world of belonging and a world of um, no more tears and sorrow. Well, and I mean, if I, you know, I don't, I don't watch the news at all. You know, I don't watch television and I don't watch television news because I believe that it's intended to try to make us upset and to try to distract us from the reality. But I, I spend a lot of time in the Bible, you know. So, um, you know, that maybe that's where I, I agree that this is suggesting, um, you know, don't watch the news. You know, <laughs> I, mean, I think that's what it's saying. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's not that I'm ignorant. I read the news, but I don't watch the news because I don't allow that kind of stuff to capture my attention. It's intended to capture our attention, and it's intended to deceive. You know, I'll go ahead and make a strong statement. You know, you watch anything you watched last week, you watch anything you watched this week, um, it's not honest, you know. You know, we got the truth, let's pay attention to what's true. You know, let's not pay attention to what we see on the news, right? I mean, that's right. honest, honest to right. God. We've got a guidebook for how we're supposed to live our lives. Well, and I would say ultimately what, to me, what the scripture is saying is when I start getting worried and concerned, when I start fretting and thinking, oh, I don't know how to do tomorrow, when I start worrying about how's remote learning going to go and, you know, how's all this going to play out, I'm reminded that, that that's worldly concerns and that really what I need to do is turn my attention back to God and to pray and say, I don't have to figure all this out. You know, what I have to do is I have to show up and be my best self. And I have to, you know, focus my attention on, you know, loving my family and loving God and doing the best that I can. And I got to trust that God will take care of the big picture, that, God, that God's got my worries and my concerns. They're not anything new to me necessarily. You know, there, God has been holding humanity in God's hands from the beginning of time. And this scripture to me reminds me, don't worry so much. Don't be so concerned. Don't get so angry, you know, if things aren't going your way. Just don't, you know, don't do those things. Focus on what I have control of. And what I have control of is my attitude and what I give my attention to. And this scripture reminds me that my attention should be focused more on God and where God is calling me in my life and how God is transforming this world and less on my worries and concerns and frets that maybe someone's going to call me to transform this world because that's not my job. My job is to love God, to love myself, and to love my neighbor um, and to do the best I can and well, to give my time to God. Is. It says present your bodies as a living sacrifice, which is your spiritual worship. You know, I'll make this last point. Since we are worshiping from home, I do not see anywhere in this book where it says that we are to, you know, sit in the pew. I don't need the word pew is not even in this book, right? But it does say to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, which is our spiritual worship. So how have we gotten so far off track to think that worship is only what happens when we go to a certain place? You know, worship is what we do with our whole lives. 
Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, which is your spiritual worship. So worship is the every breath I take, right? Worship is prayers in the morning and at night. Worship doesn't happen in any particular place. So in any case, you know, a good word for today, right? You know, God has a plan and a purpose. Let us not get distracted. <laughs> Let us not get distracted by whatever they're trying to tell us on the news, whatever news channel you prefer to watch. Let's not get distracted by that. You know, I've got something, something that... You know, I would rather occupy my attention. I pray this is also true for you. Amen. Well, let's have a song as we close uh, this time together. And uh, we can talk about, you know, the good news that we have in Jesus Christ. Um, and uh, we, we had we chosen this song. Ezekiel and I did this song earlier this morning, which is called Jesus Paid It All. And that is the good news that Jesus paid it all. And I can't even find my foot. And uh, we don't have to worry. We don't have to worry. It is done. It is finished. Do you remember it said that in the book? 2,000 years ago, it was finished. So what are we also worried about? I heard the Savior say, Thy strength again is small. In the weakness watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Let's sing that again because I messed up the words. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. And now complete in him my robe is righteousness for the shelter neath his side I am divinely blessed now Jesus paid it all Jesus paid it all all to him my hope sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow and went before the throne before the throne I stand in him complete I'll lay my trophies down all down at Jesus feet last time Jesus paid it all Jesus paid it all all to him I hope sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow Amen. Yeah, that's the good news. It's now time to gather around for communion. If you've not yet had the opportunity to gather your elements, now is indeed the time. Today we're using graham cracker and chocolate milk, but you are welcome to use whatever you have lying around your house. And as I heard this scripture today, as I was thinking about um, listening to Canaan at 6.30 this morning, I had a memory um, of a former time in my life. It was actually a time even before I met Canaan, and that's I had the opportunity to live for a year in South Central Los Angeles, and I lived with three Catholic nuns, and we lived in community together for a year. And part of that community is we would start our day at 6 a.m. in prayer with one another, and we would end our day with prayer together as a community at 6 p.m. every day. Um, seven days a week, that's what we did. And we would take turns in who would lead the prayer and how the prayer would be said. And it was a really wonderful experience. But one of the nuns I lived with, her name was Sister Lourdes. And each time I would lead the prayer, I would end with amen. And one day she stopped me and she said, do you mind if I ask you why you always say amen at the end of your prayers? And I said, well, I was finished with my prayer. And she said, well, my question is, what if God wants you to live as if all of your life is a prayer? What if every thought you had, everything you ever do, was a prayer unto God so that you never say amen until your last breath? And I kind of laughed at the moment and said, Oh, Sister Lourdes, I don't think I could live my life as everything as a prayer. And she said, Well, I challenge you. Do it and see how it goes. So since that day, I'm not saying I do it perfectly, and I definitely don't do it 
all the time, but I do keep it in my mind. It reminds me of the scripture that, you know, the only thing we have control over is our mind. And that's, you know, our thoughts and our actions. And if we live our life as a prayer, if we strive to live our life, that all we do, all we say, all that we think is a prayer, a praise unto God, maybe it would change a little about what occupies our mind and our heart. And like I said, I don't do it perfect. I'm only human, and I definitely have days that I don't do it well. But I always know that I can come back. It's one of the joys of this table, this time of communion, is it's kind of a restart button. It's an opportunity here at the beginning of this week to come to the table, to take the bread, to take the cup, to be reminded that it, it's not on our strength that we get through each day, but it's on God's strength, by God's grace, and by the love of Jesus Christ. And we come around this table and we are reminded, we are remembered into this community, this community of Jesus Christ that says that there are no divisions, there is no one better or worse than another, that all are welcome, that all belong, that there's space at this table for all. So today, if you are struggling with the, the thoughts in your mind, if you are struggling with resentments and worry, if you have concerns or just overwhelming anger, if you have sadness or grief, come to this table as you are and know that God can transform it and bless it, that God can remove these things from you and replace these things with love and with grace, with forgiveness and with light and newness. There is peace found at this table. There is a restart button to give us a try to do it better in the coming days and weeks. God is present at this table, my friend. Come now and share in this bread, in this cup. Come and let your heart be touched. Come get a restart button on the thoughts of your mind so that together we may focus our life and our love on the power of Jesus Christ and the love of God. May it be so today and always. Come to the table, for indeed you are welcomed and you are loved. Great. So um, we're going to have communion, and uh, we have remember, just as Jesus uh, was there with his disciples so long ago, he's also sharing us with the bread with us today. And uh, Jesus said in the scripture, he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. And then likewise, Jesus took the cup. The scripture teaches us how he took it and he shared it with them after supper. It says he shared it and he said to them, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for the forgiveness of sin. Take this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God this day and always. Amen. Nikki, here is the body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Canaan, this is the body of Christ broken for you. And the cup of new life poured out for you. Eden, this is the body of Christ and the cup of new life poured out for you. Amen. And also for you, this is the body of Christ, the cup of new life broken for you, shed for you. Take and eat, take and drink. Thanks be to God. Amen. And amen. Amen. And amen. And a beautiful little touch on the Lord's Prayer, Ezekiel, for communion service. And we're going to close out our service of worship today. And so glad that you could join us today. We're going to sing another song out of these old songs that I know. Apparently nobody else knows these old songs except for me. I know this one. And the ones and the old people. <laughs> so I, I do hear from old people that they like them. And there is an advantage, right, that we can sing these songs and that we can teach these because for people like me, we carry these songs with us and they give them, us encouragement, strength, and hope. So maybe that could also be true. If you're old enough, maybe that's true also for you. Let's try that. Wonderful words of life. Sing them over again to me. Wonderful words 
of high Let me more of their beauty see Wonderful words of life Words of life and beauty Teach me faith and duty Beautiful words, wonderful words Wonderful words of life so good to worship with everybody and uh, hopefully we'll see you again next week and uh, we do have other things that we can get together with throughout the week so I pray that you'll join us and Ezekiel has a song for us on the harp on the way out so um, let's leave out with a benediction as we close and now may the love of God the peace of Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all through Jesus Christ our Lord this day and always amen mm-hmm.